This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 1495, Seven Ways to Save on Wedding Food and Alcohol, by Jen Hayes of jenhayes.me. Hello, everybody, and welcome again to ORD, the show on which I, Greg Audino, read to you every single day from different blogs and books that offer insight on how to improve your relationships. Now, a lot of times, it's romantic advice, but we like to consider ourselves a well-layered show. <laughs> And today's episode is definitely an example of that, as we will be hearing from writer Jen Hayes and her ideas about how couples can save big bucks when planning a wedding. So, let's give her work the floor and start optimizing your life. Seven Ways to Save on Wedding Food and Alcohol by Jen Hayes of jenhayes.me The average wedding in the U.S. costs $30,000 Two of the most expensive aspects of a typical wedding are the food and the alcohol. When I was planning my wedding, I was stunned to see how many venues charged $8,000 plus for the food alone. If your total budget is $12,000, like mine was, or less, you can't afford to spend nearly ten k on only the food. Luckily, there are ways to significantly reduce the amount you spend on food and booze for your guests. Offer appetizers, lunch, or a buffet. If your reception occurs around dinner time, you could offer a buffet instead. Buffets are typically less expensive and they allow guests to take as much food or as little as they would like. If a buffet is still too pricey, you could have your reception earlier in the day and offer lunch to your guests instead of dinner. Another option is to provide only appetizers at the reception. I've seen this done even when the reception takes place in the evening. The key to pulling this off is to make sure your guests are well aware of this in advance. Mention on the invitations that only appetizers will be served, and leave plenty of time in between the ceremony and reception so that your guests have the option of grabbing dinner somewhere on the way to the reception. All-inclusive package. Another less expensive option is to choose an all-inclusive package. When I first started researching our reception venue, I was hesitant when I saw the $7,000 price tag for a wedding package. When I realized how many things were included in this package, I knew it was actually a great deal. Our package included appetizers, a plated dinner, alcohol, security, bartending, cake, reception venue rental, DJ, and basic decorations. Since most of the venues in our area charge a minimum of $8,000 for the food alone, we were able to save a lot of money by going with an all-inclusive package. Choose your own caterer. When I was planning my wedding, I was surprised to find that most venues offer reasonable rental fees. The tricky part was finding a venue with a reasonably priced caterer. The majority of venues have only one caterer or a few caterers that they're willing to work with, and typically the caterer has an expensive minimum price. There are, however, a few venues that will allow you to bring in your own caterer. If you can choose the caterer, you can make your reception much more affordable by selecting a cheap caterer. Cash bar. Another expensive part of the wedding is the alcohol. Cash bars, meaning that the guests pay for their own drinks, are typically considered tacky, but if you can't afford to buy booze for 200 people, you shouldn't. Limited host bar. If you have a tight budget but you're uncomfortable with a cash bar, an alternative option is a limited host bar. A fully hosted bar means that you pay the entire cost of all drinks for the whole evening, no matter how much it is, and it could be a lot if you have tons of guests or if you have some guests who are big drinkers. If you're on a shoestring budget, you're taking a big risk when you fully host a bar. Instead, why don't you offer a limited host bar? You can host the bar for a certain amount of time, for example, for the first hour or two of the reception, or up to a certain dollar amount. Once the time is up, or if you've hit the maximum dollar amount, the bar switches to a cash bar. This is what my husband and I did. We hosted the bar up to $1,000. Luckily, none of our guests were big drinkers, and by the end of the night, we had only reached $700 we were refunded the remaining $300. Cut the champagne pour. Many venues may charge a certain amount of money for the champagne pour, which occurs before the toasts are given. When we realized the champagne pour was not included in our wedding package and would have been an additional $700 at least, we decided to skip it. Our guests used their other beverages, from the host bar, for the toasts. I doubt any of them were too disappointed about the lack of champagne when they had plenty of other alcoholic options available. Skip alcohol altogether. 
You could save even more money on alcohol by simply not offering it at all. I've seen this multiple times. It tends to be most common with wedding receptions that are held earlier in the day. If your reception is at noon in a church, your guests probably won't expect alcohol. Food and alcohol are two of the most expensive aspects of a wedding. Luckily, there are several ways to cut costs in these areas. You could try offering a buffet, appetizers or lunch instead of a plated dinner, choosing your own caterer, providing a cash bar or a limited host bar, cutting the champagne pour, or skipping booze completely. You just listened to the post titled, Seven Ways to Save on Wedding Food and Alcohol, by Jen Hayes of jenhayes.me. And thank you to Jen for a post that I'm sure will be useful for anyone planning a wedding or anyone who knows someone who's planning a wedding. Now, certainly wedding prices are a bit extreme these days, as are the prices of pretty much everything. So it's my hope that you guys will consider these options if you're looking to save. And it's also worth noting uh, that I once went to a wedding that was structured as a potluck. So everyone brought a dish of their own, sometimes in place of a gift. And not only did it help the bride and groom save on money, but it was also very communal in that people felt like they genuinely contributed. People mingled more often, you know, talking about how great one another's dishes were and then exchanging recipes. So it seemed to really help the wedding be more cohesive and interactive. Not to mention that it was creative and thrifty. So, as someone who attended one such wedding and really loved that aspect of it, I would highly recommend that to anyone getting married too. Okay, and with that everyone, it is time to wrap things up for the day. As always, I appreciate you being here, and I do hope you walk away with some new ideas. Have a great start to your weekend, and I'll see you again tomorrow for both our regular show and a bonus episode. That's where your optimal life awaits.